Hello. Um, I, I guess I guess we can start. Uh, just let me. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, welcome to Fos4G. Welcome to the event. Uh, it's great to it's it's great to see you. It's great to see so many people um, that are joining us online. Um, welcome to today's session, uh, Buenos Aires Wednesday morning session. Uh, I'm John, uh, John Unan from Istanbul, Turkey, and I'm going to be the chair of um, today's early session. Uh, so I'm going to start, give way to the first uh, presentation right now to, uh, I'm going to add Andre, uh, Andre Ayn and Ian Thurston, uh, Ian Thurston, sorry, uh, to, 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 to this stream. Um, so Andrea is active in open source development for the past 20 years and is a long-time contributor and steering committee member for GeoTools and GeoServer projects. Uh, he's interested in GIS at large, like that data access, referencing, rendering, processing, and OGC protocols. And Ian works for Aston University as a GeoServer and mapping consultant during the day and supports GeoTools and GeoServer users by night. Um, welcome, Andrea and Ian. Um, Thank you. Uh, the Thanks. stage is yours, and you can start the presentation. Uh, I'm going to share any questions, any questions from uh, when you see you. Okay. I hope you can all hear me. Yep. Uh, Good. Well, as long as Andrea can hear me, that's probably the important bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, but let's go. Let's go. So. so the secret life of open source developers. This is a, a somewhat updated version of the talk we gave in Romania, the last time we all got together in person. Yep. So, uh, quick state just to say, I didn't tell my boss I was doing this, um, and he doesn't know what I'm about to say, so you can't hold him responsible. <laughs> So I think we all can agree, or those of us that are open source developers can agree, um, that there's a pro image problem. Everybody thinks that open source is this big, happy room full of people all getting together, discussing things. Uh, and mostly, actually, it's just somebody sat in their office on their own thinking, I could just get one more ticket done before I go to bed. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, as we said, that GeoTools, GeoServer, uh, GDAL certainly have a problem in terms of our commits for the contributor. Um, if you see that there's up here on the right hand side, that is presumably Andrea. Um, Should be me. I suspect. Um, this is actually, this will be 2018 data, I guess, because I couldn't find a way of getting this data out of GitHub this morning when I was trying to refresh it. Um, GDAL has a slightly bigger problem. Uh, that will be Evan. Um, so they've actually taken some steps to, to overcome this now. Um, so it's still Evan doing most of the work, but they're paying him to do it now. So that yep. makes it much more likely that it'll keep going. Map General server is speaking, spread out. Generally speaking, all these projects have uh, most of the activity concentrated in uh, a, a small bunch of people, either four or five or uh, you know one or two and uh, that can be a problem because it means that we all have a small bus factor that's it um, um one of the blog posts i was reading this week while i was thinking about what to say during this conference uh, was saying that um somebody was saying 75 percent of open source developers have contemplated quitting and just walking away from their project uh, in the last two years um, yes, i'm not quite sure where they got those statistics from but uh, Feels through. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sounded plausible. Um, so what do we do? We work, we have proper jobs, we have to pay the mortgage, um, buy food, uh, all of those important things. Uh, we write code, we look after our family, we interact with our family occasionally, and we sleep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is a comic question. that I recaptioned uh, 
that I found on the internet and uh, recaptioned it uh, towards uh, open source maintenance. And it says, oh, so the, the, the speaker says, who wants well-maintained open source and everybody wants it, of course. And uh, then he asks, uh, who wants to contribute fixes? And everybody is looking at the ground uh, sad because uh, contributing fixes is already one step up and uh, already too much for many. But the real hard question is, who wants to be a maintainer? And poof, everybody's gone because being a maintainer is the really hard part of participating in open source. Um, there you go. This is a question we had on Twitter. You know, people right. have jobs. That's eight hours work. Time to move to and from the office. Sleep eight hours a day. That's sixteen hours. They want to do other stuff like college or kids or exercise or shower or eat. So, is it a want issue or a can't issue? And, yeah. Uh, and yeah. Ray at that replied. point, I, I was like, uh, well. Um, I have a job that uh, that uh, involves open source, uh, and uh, I also have a family with two kids. I work, cook, do the grocery, get out the family, and yet I put extra weekend hours on, on those same projects, reviewing pull requests, fixing bugs, feature improvements uh, on my own. So uh, I'm I'm kind of wondering who, who who these people that he was talking about are, because apparently I'm not in 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 that set of people. That's it. It's, uh... So yes, so this was Andrea's timetable pre-work, pre-pandemic, uh, right? And uh, as you can see, most of my time is actually spent either sleeping, working, or being with my family. And the pre-pandemic, I could afford to spend like uh, three hours with my my head concentrated on. Uh, on you know doing bug fixing and uh, reviewing pull requests and the like, and and then uh, four more hours, but uh, uh, looking after my kids while I was doing that, so well not very concentrated. However, the pandemic changed things for the worse. It's I think it's common experience that uh, especially for the for those having a family uh, that we spend much more time looking after the family. Um, and as a result, I, I ended up with two hours of uh, of my spare time dedicated to uh, to open source, and and the rest is um, basically being busy all the time. Besides the Sunday morning, Sunday morning I take my bike, go out five hours. I'm I'm gone. <laughs> I need to vent out for uh, for a bit before taking on another week like that. Uh, mine slightly different. Um... On a really good week, I might get in eight whole hours of working on open source code. Um, on a less good week, when I'm not feeling so well or, or I'm just more tired, I might only get an hour in. I might actually sleep through those mornings, sun, Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning. In, um, my parents rang me up yes, on Saturday this week uh, at half past 11. And Leslie said, I'll, I'll go and wake him up. Um, and they were horrified that I was still asleep at half past 11. I said, no, no, it's fine. I had to wake up. The phone was ringing. <laughs> um, but I've built in a lot more relaxing. Uh, and, you know, I try not to go back into the office and do some coding in the evenings any longer the way I used to before pandemic. Um, I'm much more aware of the fact that I ought to try and get out of the house occasionally. <laughs> Right, and so uh, this comes back to some di discussion that we had on Twitter about uh, uh, open source uh, having to be maintained by paid developers rather than volunteers. And uh, there was a bit of a back and forth, uh, okay, but uh, you know, what, what are the allegiances of the people just doing it for work rather than uh, you know being attached to the project and uh, putting their own time in and uh, the, the paragon uh, uh, the parallel with a with a doctor and so on uh, but uh, well we all know that uh, um, uh, being paid is not uh, necessarily the uh, guaranteeing that that uh, the project will uh, get uh, good uh, good attention as you said, the UK, we've decided that we're going to make our doctors work for next to nothing anyway. It's good for them. They wanted to be a doctor. They don't need to be paid. 
right. <laughs> um, there you go. So yes, I'd like open source. Once it's no longer a toy product, should be maintained by paid programmers rather than volunteers. But also, why should I pay for your free software, which is the majority of our users? Right. So um, at the same time, we we have this contrast between uh, people saying, "Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's big enough, it's important enough that it should be paid." But at the, if at the same time most of the users don't want to pay for services around it, then, then we have a problem because uh, where is that money coming from? Uh, this is one of my favorite oatmeal <laughs> comics that I, I stole from the oatmeal. I didn't actually pay him for it, I'll confess. <laughs> um, it's, you know, hello, creative person. Thank you for making that thing. You're welcome. Here's an invoice. No, 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 you're doing it for exposure. And... Uh, Turns out you can't actually spend exposure. It's no good to you. Uh, if all of your customers want you to do it for free, then uh, you do end up with uh, no money. Here are things that we do on a pretty much daily basis. Um, I'm guessing even on days where I don't do any coding, I will do at least the first three or four of these. So I'll answer questions on the mailing list. Um, I have lots of questions on Stack Exchange. Um, and if you ask an interesting question on Stack Exchange, I will spend a substantial amount of time, often, working out an answer for you. Um, just because I'm good like that, and because I've got 70,000 internet points now. And one day I'm going to work out what I can spend those on. Um, we review the pull requests that other people have made. Hopefully, other people have made. Sometimes it's just, you know, I'll review Andreas and Andreas reviews mine. And we both review Jody's. Uh, <laughs> and there we go. And that, that's, that's the GS server mate, the review system working at heart full speed. Um, and then we go and answer questions that are on the bug list. Uh, another one I get to do quite often is, is, is to look at for questions on the security list uh, and spam on the security list. The number of people who feel that trying to sell me a new drone is a reason to email the security list is just amazing. Uh, like five or six a week. Uh, uh, we answer questions on Twitter because um, often people will ask a question on Twitter and copy me in as, as uh, onto the question, or they'll ask Andrea about the question. Um, and then you've got like 140 characters to write an answer, and it's not very easy <laughs> unless you can just point them straight to the manual, which often you can. And then finally, we get to write some code. Which is um, what we wanted to do in the first yes, place. That was why we got into uh, into open source development in the first place. Uh, then we get people like this. Um, so apparently we're idiots because the plugin page takes you to the GS server total download page, not to the actual plugin. Uh, this apparently means that this guy could actually scroll down to the bottom of the page where the plugins were. Um, didn't hear any more from him after we pointed that out. Right. Uh, and that, that, this ones. is the, the key. Uh, uh, people look looking at the project as, as if it was uh, somebody else's, as if, you know, it's all the responsibility of the developers and maintainers. Why don't they test it? Why they don't document it uh, well enough and so on? Why don't they build an OSX installer for me? It's, and we are like, Dude, there is no day in in a community. It's, it's a shared it's, good. It's it's, yes. it's always us. And let's be honest, GS server works just the way we want it to. Because if it didn't, we'd have fixed it by now. <laughs> well, actually, there are some annoying bits that I keep meaning to fix. But mostly, if you find something that doesn't work the way you want it to do, it probably works the way I want it to. Um, yes, this is a rather annoying. Uh, discussion I had on Twitter a few years ago about um, the, the fact that the QGIS community didn't serve of MacOS users. And we tried to point out that, you know, he was part of the QGIS community um, and that, yes, QGIS was not serving macOS users correctly. But, uh, yeah, so Howard jumped in at that point and said, you know, you don't really understand this, do you? You haven't paid any money for this. Uh, and it got abusive after that. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, 
you you know, know, at that point, on, you're just blocked. Having... I never see you ever again. <laughs> People keep on having that this uh, this uh, kind of relationship that they learned from the uh, commercial proprietary world, uh, or from going to the supermarket, or going to buy a car, that they it's a product, so they they spend money on it, and then they got rights about it, and they got a warranty. They they sometimes uh, getting bossy with uh, with a customer service on, or or uh, stuff like that works, but. In our case, it doesn't, and, and it doesn't for a very specific reason. Because open source is a duocracy, and our licenses say otherwise. So, Ian. Uh, yes, so, you know, if you want it tested or something, then by all means, test it. Uh, particularly if you've got a hardware or an operating system that I haven't got, then you need to test it. Um, and you need to be polite. I'm not, we're not just a chatbot somewhere you know we're not corporate ai chatbot um if you're rude to us we will just block you and never talk to you ever again no matter how much problems you get into uh and then yes the you know gs tools and gs server released under the gpl general gnu public license the, it's clear it specifically says there is no warranty we prescribe it as is without a warranty of any kind uh, should the program prove defective, you assume the cost of all necessary servicing, repair, or connect correction. We didn't promise you that it would work even. Right. You, know, you should uh, be grateful. It does work. <laughs> so it's not like we are going to give you the cold shoulder and uh, say it's your problem uh, because uh, we typically, mm, open source developers uh, are people that tend to share. I mean, they, they did it the first time they, they opened the code, right? So they have this tendency of trying to be helpful, but you have to be respectful and understand yeah. that we cannot just solve your problem because you have it, because we have our own life, uh, work, family, and so on. But we will we will bend over backwards to help somebody who is tr willing to help us, uh, who's prepared to um, to work with us, to provide the information we need to debug their problem. Just emailing us to say it doesn't work you should fix this is no use at all. Um, and sadly, that's quite a lot of the emails we get. Um, I wrote a blog post earlier this week. I, I'd been thinking about why I was I did, did open source and why I contributed. And basically, I was saying there are three things that will get me interested. One is you offer to pay me to do it. Um, and it's still going to be relatively interesting before I'll do it, even then. Uh, if you want me to be ordered to do it, you have to pay my boss to tell me to do it. And he charges a lot more than I do on Fridays. Um, it's got to be an interesting problem that I want, I've always wondered how it worked. So I did some stuff with contouring um, and topologically correct um, simplification. Oh, no, and then the centerline labeling. I was just, you know, interesting things I wondered if I could get work out how to do them. And then the other one is if it's embarrassing, you know, if there's a bug that embarrasses me. Um, so I, I did some basic technical debt reduction where I finished off something that Boundless had started before they went bust. Um, and uh, it was, you know, it was bugging me every time I went to that page when I was doing a training course that the fact the modules list wasn't completely bugged me. So I spent right. some time fixing it. Uh, but those are the sorts of reasons that people do. We all have our own reasons for being involved in open source, but it tends to be things like that. It's because it's interests. We want to poke it, or it's because we, you know, we want, you know, we're embarrassed that there's a bug there, or we want something to do something that it doesn't do at the moment. Yep. Um, and then this final slide here. Um, you can support open source. Um, obviously, you can donate directly to the project via OSGO. Or you can go and support one of the companies that, that employs people like me and Andrea or Jody um, and listed on our support contracts. Go and buy a support contract. You think nothing of paying, you know, thousands of pounds, dollars, euros per person and for some of your, your, your GIS software from commercial vendors. There's, for about the price of a couple of seats on license, licenses, you can buy a year's worth of support from somebody who will actually fix your bugs for you and who supports the software. Right. 
And that's uh, it. Oh, we have a conclusion slide as well. <laughs> yes. So we probably haven't changed anybody's mind today, but might make you think a little bit more about the developers that uh, make and support your software. And I think, you know, it's true. We don't, we really do think of you as part of our community rather than customers. Uh, and we need you to think the same. Right. People to people, not uh, consumer to producer. Yes, producer to consumer. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So do we have any questions? That's it. Where would I see uh, questions if we had any? Yeah, thank you. There are some questions. Johnny uh, is uh, going to tell us. Uh, yeah, Excellent. I can now because I, I, I just heard that there were some microphone problems. So how are you able to hear me well now? Um, oh. Apparently worse than before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but still somewhat parsable. <laughs> yeah, we can work out what you're saying. <laughs> Okay, I'm um, sorry about that. I'm trying to, I will, I will, I will try to work on that. But, uh, we have some questions, uh, two questions that are very similar to each other. So, how could someone beginner in coding can start on contributing without messing up everything? Uh, you have to get involved uh, slowly and little by little. Uh, big, big and old projects like uh, like GeoServer, GeoTools, MapServer, QGIS, and so on, they built over time a, a large set of uh, checks, procedures, uh, habits, and the like. So the, the, the worst thing that you can do is actually stumble in and say, yeah, I have this pull request that, that changes 200 files. Please review it for me. That, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> but, but it's beginning by little things like, uh, sit on the mailing lists of the developers of the users, try to get a feeler of how the community works. Uh, try to find uh, a bug that you're interested in too that seems easy. Maybe ask pointers on the developer list like, hey, I would like to contribute something little to you know get, uh, get involved. And uh, how do I go about it? And you probably will get some pointers on where in the code that bug is likely happening or where you can start debugging. And instead, most of the people just sit in a corner there doing apparently nothing, and then boom, all of a sudden, they show up with a large and urgent and very important uh, code change that, that they absolutely need to contribute before the end of the week. And th th that's uh, just uh, incompatible with, uh, with, with, with our ways and, and with the availability of time because reviewing poor request and the like is expensive time wise that's it we have a we have a whole bunch of of issues and i think i can't remember how there's a have. filter for that we have a, yes we have a filter somewhere for sprint um, and if you ask on the list somebody will point you to it right um and then only take the ones that are open and not in progress. Um, but then there are, you know. There is also a lot of documentation and uh, it needs uh, improvements of various kinds, uh, um, completing uh, documentation that is missing, making the existing documentation better, That's writing yeah. tutorials, because most of the documentation tends to be reference guide instead. So step-by-step -step instructions on how to do something are welcomed, uh, translations, and uh, also just sitting on the user list and try to answer each other questions, that questions. helps a lot. Um, yeah. But yes, so it was a, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday on GIS Stack Exchange who was trying to do something uh, and appeared to be basically just picking random things from his autocomplete to try and find the method he wanted. Um, and I was gently trying to suggest to him that maybe he'd like to go in and oh, to, to add to the Java docs for that file to make it clear as to what the different functions did um, mm -hmm. after I'd explained it to him. Um, I don't know if he'll take me up on that offer, but that's another good place to start. Yeah. But, but it would a, be nice. Find, find a class that's poorly documented and work through, work out what's going on and then write some documentation about it. <laughs> We'd always be grateful for that. <laughs> yep. Uh, Jumping to another question, guys. Um, Somebody's asking um, could there are four upwards about uh, parallels with unpaid housework and volunteering on open source. Any comments on that? Parallels between volunteering in open source and? And unpaid housework. 
on paper? Uh, uh, yeah, well, okay. Uh, sure, I mean, uh, cooking, cleaning, and uh, washing, it's, it's a stuff that we do for our family, for sure. Um, but, but I think it's, it's not quite uh, the same because unpaid housework, it's something that we do for our family. So for our close relative, the relationship is uh, much tighter. Uh, it's more close to volunteering in, in some, uh, some other activity where you are actually giving something to strangers. Yeah, it's... And then that's also the distance that we have uh, with our use ba user base. We are a tight knit with between developers, but a somewhat distant to, to, the, to users in, in terms of human relationship. I'm think I'm, I'm, I say. Yeah, it's most similar. Not so much to me cleaning the house or cooking meals, uh, but more. Uh, one morning a week, I go to a repair cafe and fix broken electrical equipment for people. Um, and we're quite open about the fact we need some money for doing that. So we have a donation tub on the table next to where we're repairing things as a hint to people that they might like to put some money in in when we fix their uh, expensive piece of electronics the, the funny and thing is that's that where we probably, go wrong in open source prob probably in that case you you see the people working for you and you see the tab for donating and it's almost like uh, automatic to donate something yeah and instead with open source you say yeah okay thank you bye bye poof gone so you can download it from SourceForge without ever seeing us. Right. Um, OK, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to combine the last question. So uh, I apologize. I have, a, I have another presentation, and I, I really have to go, but Ian will probably field it. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. And um, I'm going to remind the audience, uh, you can always get in touch with, uh, with, with, with the presenters afterwards, after the sessions, if you yeah. have, if you have more in-depth questions. But, I'm just going to go through the last question. Uh, okay. To the remaining time of him, Ian. So one point is how much a person can delegate tasks to somebody else uh, in open source development. And combining another question, how many requests per month do you receive requesting to do free work, practice work for uh, as an as an as a an open source developer? Um. Well, obviously we can we can delegate tasks. You know, it. We love delegating tasks. It's that's ideal. If somebody else, uh, somebody else wants to do something, if somebody turns up on the mailing list and volunteers to do something, we've always got open issues we can point them to. Um, I forget how many we have at the moment, but we've always got you know, yeah, uh, several hundred. Uh, let me see how many open tickets do we have currently. We have 924 open tickets at the moment, so there's always something we can delegate to people. Um, as for people asking me to do things for free, um, I don't know, probably three or four a week uh, in a good week. Uh, in a bad week, could be several tens of, of people. Um, it, you know, it, it's probably... It certainly would be an odd week if somebody hadn't asked me to do something for them in that week. Um, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thanks for thanks for your comments and thanks for the thank, thanks to the audience for the great uh, comments and questions. If you want to follow up with uh, Andrea or Ian, uh, just feel free to um, just ping them. We have a message uh, through Venulus. Uh, thanks a lot, Ian. Uh, Okay. Have a nice have a nice rest of the conference. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.